Okay, so I think I, I mentioned in the summoning video I might talk about my uh, Aether Raids here. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna talk about my uh, Aether Raids defense, uh, how it's been doing so far, and, and like some ideas as well as like the, just kind of overall discussion of it. Um, as always, I'm not like the best uh, personally. I like refer, I defer a lot of people to uh, Acris if you haven't already uh, seen his channel, um, which I mean. Basically, like if you haven't seen his channel, just go subscribe to him. He'll give you probably the most. Like I've learned, the stuff I'm telling you is probably going to be a lot of reiteration and stuff I've learned from his channel anyway. Um, but yeah, so if you look up defense results here. Uh, I've changed. I changed it. I had 18 before. It was just kind of like whatever I put together, um, whatever flying units I had, I put them in a flyer ball and I just left them like that. It wasn't too much strategy, too much um, like outside thoughts going on like it was just sort of from my knowledge I put it together um, and this the team I'm about to show you is a little more uh, refined on my part as well as like taking ideas from again like I said people like Acarus um, basically he's like the main one um, who, who really that I've seen discusses it well enough um, but this second this team I have here has is more modified I've had pretty good success with it so far um, let's see days left in season Defense results is here, so I've had pretty good success with it so far. Successes, uh, failure here, but and then failures get caught by the uh, the thing there. So um, over the past few um, eighth or raid seasons, I've really dipped below these two, um, which is pretty good. Uh, th this is though. This is I'd like to point out here. This is in part um, due to two different things, right? Uh, for one, it, it, it comes from how Aether Raids is scored. Uh, so if I was a better player, like, um, yeah, just if I was a better player in general, right, I would have higher, every every time I play Aether Raids, let's say, because I don't, I do tend to, um, like, perfect them a lot, but sometimes I'll lose a unit, sometimes I'll go down a little bit, right, uh, in that sense. Um, I don't know if this is optimal scoring right here what I have here I kind of doubt it is but I think I'll be able to make tier 27 by the end uh, maybe we'll see it anyway um, but like I said it, it's a combination of how well you do on offense that also affects who ends up attacking you on defense um, so as I improve my and they both kind of feed off of each other so as you improve your defense you'll end up having to attack uh, more difficult people because your defense will survive more and it'll put you in a higher bracket and then you attack those people um, so it's there's a lot of interplay and it's not like you know if your defense is doing good it's not always because you have like a very good defense um, again a lot of times it's that scoring stuff and how you get moved up and down in the brackets and all that kind of uh, all that kind of uh, background stuff with with numerics and whatnot um, so let's take a look here so this is the defense team I'm running now uh, these two are currently locked so it's this and this. Uh, as many of you have seen, I, I have a level uh, plus nine Camilla, so plus three there. She's a uh, plus three here. So you can see this. This has been locked for a while, uh, mainly because I use them for both. Now, if again going back to that, if you pay attention to um, the way the meta changes between Astra and um, Light Seasons, you don't really want to use the same type of strategy for both seasons. Um, one season is more um, fosters more of a certain strategy than another one that you want to be careful of uh, when you're doing stuff like that. So I really do think you should have one for each season, uh, uh, one specific team for each season. But personally, um, I guess the problem is I just can't be asked, so I, I kind of just I'm going with this. Um, but th like, there's all kinds of problems with the way this is set up currently. Um, but it's what I have now, uh, and I'm gonna go. So these are locked in, like I said, for the blessings because like she's here, but I need her light blessing because I use her uh, on my um, raiding as a raiding party as like an offensive unit, AR offense unit, uh, as well as her, right? And then a lot of these, since I'm using her here uh, for uh, what is this? This is dark, I think. No, this is anima blessing, right? Uh, she's also used here in uh, dark blessing, so that's wasting two blessings. So I can't just be like every season swapping back and forth, so I need to lock them in. Uh, they've been locked in like this for a while. Uh, I've made a lot of improvements here and there to these units, so let's take... Uh, I want to take a look at those, and you really do need these bonuses, these blessing bonuses, which is why it's better to keep it like that, for, at least for me for now. So let's come over here and talk about what... This is going to be 
theoretically this is going to be my anima season um, defense team. Uh, but before we go any further, I do want to make sure I give credit where credit is due. So let's take a look here. Uh, let's close that out and put this here. Uh, so this team is, as you can see, basically just taken from... Uh, Oh, you can't really see my um, pointer here. Uh, but basically, this team is taken to some degree from uh, Acuris' own uh, videos, and which I do watch a lot. That I, Again, I, I recommend uh, everyone go sort of uh, look into that, uh, look into his, his videos, and you'll learn quite a lot from them. Um, but so basically, the point here is uh, this this team kind of... I want to sort of talk through what why this is set up the way that it is and what the point of it is here. Uh, using my own, but yeah, so like I said, uh, Acris' channel will be linked in the description um, Again, go check him out uh, if you want super in-depth But I'm just going to talk about it sort of in my experience and and, and the way I'm using it and, and what modifications I've added to it and what sort of personalization I've added to it um, But yeah, so especially because I, I Don't know. I mean I look I subscribe to his YouTube channel. I don't go to his twitch uh, his Twitch seems more active and I'm sure he discusses a lot more there um, but I just, I can't be asked. Twitch is just not something I really care too much about. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, if he if he goes into depth, because from the YouTube videos that he's uploaded from my end, I look at a lot of these videos, and he doesn't talk about, like, the flyer ball. They're always, it always comes up incidentally. Like, he'll just show it here. Oh, here's an example of blah, 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 and then move on from there. But he never lingers on it and makes a dedicated video to the flyer ball, where the things go, why they go where they go, um, doing all this sort of stuff, which... In general, it might seem sort of, um, what's the word, like common sense, certain things, certain things, uh, placements here and there might be common sense and all that stuff, but as um, one of my old uh, mathematics, mathematical proof professors once told me is that uh, there's no such thing as common sense. So I thought I'd sort of talk about how, again, how I put place these, uh, position these units, um, what my thought process is, and how I would go about building certain things like this. Um, so yeah, so... Uh, again, like like I said, mine is, if you look at this and you look at uh, mine here, you can see, uh, let's see, where am I? You can see mine is basically uh, the same thing, um, if not 100%, but very similar, um, down to like the map selection where things are going. So let's talk about, on my end, why things are placed the way they are. So I think you can see the, the pointer here this time, yeah, okay. Um, so, in this case, I do need to move these traps around, but these aren't really that important. Uh, these used to be trapped here differently, but basically, uh, Ac so Acris doesn't have a duo unit on his team, which I think has some value to keeping here. Um, because this duels hindrance thing doesn't work without a dual unit on your team. Um, and I'm running Pala here. Now, as, if you saw, let's, let's again close this out here. My Pala basically is fulfilling the same purpose as Est. Um, and Est, again, is a very strong free-to-play unit uh, at a plus 10 merge. Uh, but where I am now, I came to the conclusion of like... Uh, I have... I can either plus 10 her, I think mine's at plus 3 right now. Because uh, I was building, I was working on that. Uh, but Pala came out, and I really liked Pala. I liked her duo skill. Um, for one, I liked the fact that she was a duo unit. And for two... I liked um, her her spear. It was a very strong weapon. Um, but yeah, and I obviously I also like the uh, character. I mean, I like the fact that it's a uh, the the three unit here, and I just like all three of these characters. So I thought that was pretty cool. But what I the reason I went with her specifically is because she basically has comparable, if not maybe more power than a plus ten est while only needing to be a plus one. So as you can see here, I have a plus one uh, Pala, and she's already about as strong as the Est. Now, she'll never be as strong, like Est is great against generally any unit, uh, but she's just an utter tank destroyer. Uh, Pala does not have that uh, same advantage, which means that like Est can go up against uh, a Surtur and still win that matchup. Probably nine times out of ten. I mean, maybe ten times out of ten, but I always like to keep that room for extenuating circumstances. Uh, but nine times out of ten, Est can take down that Surtur or that green, whatever that green tank is. And Surtur's are, are decently common, though they're reducing in commonality. I think I haven't seen very many of them anymore uh, in Aether raids. Um, 
people are starting to pick up uh, Brave Ike over Surtur as a, as a green tank there, but that, that's besides the point. Um, but yeah, like I said, so Est will always have value because of her tank effectiveness, uh, where Pala is just generally good against anything that isn't that. Um, and she can take a lot of tanks in general too, um, just oftentimes not green tanks, uh, specifically armored green armor units. Um, however, both of them, both Est and uh, Pala here, uh, fare miserably against, um, what's his name? We know the guy, uh, Brave Ike. Because um, Brave Ike, uh, Est's effective, weapon effectiveness doesn't count for anything against him. Because he's not a tank, he's not a uh, armor unit, obviously. Um, again, Est's could do pretty well against him, um, but... I've tested a few of my uh, Pala, what she can do against him, and if, if Pala can't really do much, I don't think Est is going to do any better. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so the, my choice for Pala there was for one, resources. You know, I had a plus three. Do I want to invest all these feathers and all these unit resources into making the uh, Est plus 10? And um, Pala was there, so I just went with Pala, got the plus one on her with the attack boon, fortunately. Um, and that was that's that was me sort of sorted in that case. Uh, so like I said, so she's here. Uh, let's take a look again here. Uh, so he has Micaiah here, which is good because you know obviously I have Micaiah too. Um, which he, he mentioned uh, basically this is this is a different season, right? This is a dark season. I'm I'm talking about uh, anima season. Um, but Micaiah's here. Obviously, she serves a pretty good purpose in terms of. Uh, for one, uh, let's go look at her. Yoon's Whispers uh, is a great skill for just mass debuffing whole teams. Um, alternatives might be something like Aversa, right? I think we all know Aversa has uh, Aversa's, uh, versus Knight. Gives everybody minus three to everything and uh, panic. Um, but yeah, so uh, she's also very good as a, as a mage unit because she's got attack, re um, attack res bond, you give her some flying. Now, I'd like to point out here, uh, this flyer formation is given to her normally. So th these these are, again, this is not locked in, this is these units change as I'm using them, but we're, we're gonna talk about here right now uh, what skills they should have, or I think they should have um, going forward as soon as I, I get around to that point. Um, but yeah, so again, debuffing as well as dual coverage for calves and tanks. Um, yeah, so that's why to me, leaving out the uh, Est's tank effectiveness isn't such a big deal because you can just have Micaiah go in and solve those problems uh, for you, theoretically, assuming, you know, AI works out the way uh, you'd like it to. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the thing about this here is to me, right, or to, to maybe like newer players, you might ask like, why are you going with... Um, Let's see, what is this place called? I think it's called Lost uh, Terrain. Uh, where is it? Lost Castle. So why go with Lost Castle if it has these two defensive tiles, which basically means um, they boost your unit's defenses like crazy, give you a lot more survivability, and you know tanks can just run in here. The problem being, um, for me anyway, the way I, I look at this is these two tiles wanting to like end turn on them, they're just kill boxes. There aren't a whole lot of units that can survive basically everything that's coming out of this because of how much coverage we have. Um, both these two are super tanky and survivable, so they can do a lot uh, in this area. Especially having the two green units like her and, and uh, Camilla. And I'll have some builds here on the side. Let's go actually put those up now. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, my Camilla is plus nine as always. The the meme is real there. Um, so my Camilla is a plus nine. Uh, but this is on the on the left here. Uh, again, you can't see my mouse, but um, let's put this here for a second. You can't see my mouse, but um, this is what a theoretical plus ten Camilla would look like. Also, I don't have uh, any feathers into her. I think I do have the feathers, but I'd rather hold off on. Uh, just sacrificing all those feathers to her uh, until I get the plus 10 and I get other things uh, sort of moved around where they should be. Um, but yeah, so in this theoretical, uh, what I what I would like to have here in this position, uh, we have her right now, she doesn't have IOT shield because again, um, my Boki uses IOT shield because I use her on Aether Raid's uh, offense. Uh, so the IOT shield is there right, to just remove that weakness, so now she's only weak to reds, uh, which 
we'll, we'll get to that in a, in a moment. But um, yeah, so eventually I'd like to give her the um, Fury 4. Let's go back here. The Fury 4 instead of the Fury 3. Uh, just to give her more stats. I keep forgetting not to touch her. Um, the Moonbow, I'm probably going to change to Iceberg or Glacies or something of that um, of that kind just because she has a huge res stat thanks to the Mirabilis um, uh, bonus or whatever, the, the Blessing. Um, as well as I'd like to give her Guard. That way she just it's harder to kill her without a special um, is what that turns into. Uh, let's see, so again her defense, her res is higher, she'd have more speed. The, the speed boost with her Camilla's Axe, which so we can see here. Um, the main reason I chose her, so let, let's put up another image here for a second. Um, so in this case, over here on the right side, we have basically another unit that can fulfill a similar purpose to what uh, Camilla can do in this situation. And basically, He's here to provide a massive bulk on the anchoring position is what I would like to refer to as would like to refer to in this position here. So this is basically your anchor. Um, if they're going to attack, they're going to attack this position first because either they're going to attack one of your units um, or end turn and then everything goes from there and usually things fall apart, which when you just end turn on a, like a tile here or something like that, right? Um, so this position is a very important position to put someone who is very tanky, which is why when I did this a while ago on this team, this is who I put. I put this here for colorless and effectiveness and uh, general just um, being a good unit to have here. Um, but anyway, so this is this is what we have now. So I have Ashnard here as a, an example for another as another example of what you can put in this position. Um, Ashnard is incredibly tanky. Uh, the build there is kind of like kind of what I would run. Um, obviously, the builds can change from, from person to person to whatever you, skills you have available and whatever you just want to run. Um, but I think the Fortress Res defense would be very powerful on him just for increasing his survivability. But uh, what you want to realize at this point is that you you need to like you need to worry about survivability to a point, but then after a while, when you start stacking, I mean, I can see at this point where maybe um, Ashnard is, is going a little overboard on survivability. You want to start considering things like actually uh, retaliating and, and, and defeating units. Um, so maybe you can sacrifice some some stuff to, to change that on him. Again, I don't run Ashnard, so I haven't done enough testing with him. I just putting up this build here as to what you could run in that position instead. Um, yeah, so I mean, you can see obviously there's an incredible amount of bulk here. Uh, 50 defense and 47 res is hard for basically anyone to um, to try to penetrate. Uh, you can hit him with a blue mage, and one of the reasons I don't use him is one, uh, I just don't like uh, like I don't know anything about Ashnard. I don't I don't play any of the Fire Emblem games basically, um, but I, I do like Camilla for you know obvious reasons. Um, but I also value her Camilla's axe just because of how much stats it gives. To her, it's not a whole lot, but it gives to her plus four attack and speed because she's near them, as well as her by herself grants uh, plus four defense res, as well as granting plus three attack speed. So by herself, she's giving out um, eight plus six is what? Eight plus six is 13, 14? Yeah, 14 stats uh, to everything, to all the flyer units around her. Um, so that's kind of why I like her. This Camilla's Axe is very useful. Um, so that's why I have her on anchor position. Now, as you can see on the build here, uh, reposition is actually quite valuable here because, like I mentioned before, so here, here's the way this is going to work out. Since you have this person here as your anchor, you're going to either have people end turn here or here or try to do something like here or here, it doesn't really matter, but they're going to end turn somewhere else. Um, the, the idea is to have everybody basically dogpile on them. So. Her, I have flyer formation here just because that, that's what I had before, but as you can see there she had guard because she doesn't need to move towards any units. People need to move towards her. So it's important that she has flyer formation, she has flyer formation, her as well, which again, uh, she usually has it in the seal, uh, her as well, uh, and then him. So that if, if someone sits here and they bait her out, she's going to hit them and then she's going to fly around somewhere like here and hit them. Or, uh, depending, let's put him here again. If someone hits her here and she doesn't have the kill on them, 
Uh, normally, so what I what I have her when I when I will lock this team in, I'm gonna take off. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, ward, the the ward flyers for ground orders. That way, um, it it sort of fixes his mobility problem because this way he has flyer formation basically, and if someone baits here in this spot, he can then hit them there, uh, making this a very dangerous spot to be in. Um, if they stand here again, you have to think of the range that they have here. So if they stand here, basically she's gonna hit her. Uh, these might fly over here and start moving things. Um, they might move here, she'll dance somebody, and then she'll stand here and hit them or, or something, right? Let's go put these back the way they were. So her, she doesn't really need flyer formation is the, the bottom line of, of what I what that line of inquiry was there. Um, so the, again, like Ashnard, if he was in that position, he doesn't need it either. Uh, So that's what guard is there just to give her more survivability you can't just like special her with anything uh, really quickly um io shield is again to take away the uh colorless bow or the bow effectiveness and then ward to keep everybody else alive um the reposition is is kind of it's not like vital but um it's obviously a very important part of having her here because that way if if she comes over here to hit somebody um, she, you want her to have reposition because she's the tanky one, so you want to flip people around into safe positions with her. So if like she comes over here or she's like down here somewhere, uh, she'll come in and reposition them to just like put them into safety. Uh, so these two will have reposition for that reason because they're the the main tanks. So they'll go around basically repositioning things. Hopefully, theoretically, right? Um, AI, you know, it, it, it's somewhat unpredictable. It's, it's predictable when you're fighting against them, but when you're leaving your defenses there, who knows what situations they'll be in? Uh, who knows what they'll do, when they'll do it? Uh, but that's sort of the theory anyway. These two will have reposition to uh, flip the units back into safe positions. Um, Pala, she has reposition here because that's what she came with and I haven't changed it, but I think uh, for her and probably for him, I'm going to change, I'm going to give them um, drawback that way because again, so uh, let's just put, uh, I don't know, here somewhere. Uh, she goes here, right, and let's say for some reason she came this way. Uh, if she hits something here and the next turn, she will reposition her back here, and then if it's her turn, she will drag Camilla back in this this way to keep the flyer ball together. So the weaker ones, the ones that aren't going to be taking a lot of damage, you I, I would like to have drawback on, um, while the the main tanks that are here to like do all the tanking have reposition to swap it, like to just drop them behind her. Uh, that can kind of work uh, the opposite way. She could like swap him here and then have him do something like that, right? But for general purpose, you want them to like throw them back behind them so that they're in a safe position. Um, and so they're hit by all the wards and all that. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, that's that. That's why she has red position. Uh, and then there you see she has Iceberg, but like I said, Iceberg or Glacies or something very strong to give her uh, kill potential. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what is going there. Uh, now let's talk about, let's see if I can, okay. So let's talk about um, Minerva. So in this position, uh, again, this team is kind of not ideal. You, it, I'm already running too many greens, right? So if you're gonna have her as your main tank, you kind of want to run something red back here. But we'll, we'll see how I patch that up, um, sort of talking through it. Um, but anyway, so let's consider Minerva. Um, Minerva here, um, this is my Minerva. She's only plus one. I haven't actually started infesting Grails in her, which I will um, as soon as I. I, I just kind of want to get. Like, the, the longer you can go without spending your Grails, the better, because then you can consider um, as units start coming out. Um, and I don't really need her right now, like I said, so right now she's only at a plus one, whatever I got from her. Um, but so let's talk about what Minerva, uh, what you can do with Minerva. Uh, again, she has reposition for that purpose in that, um, left, in that left panel. She has reposition for moving people behind her. So the special is very interesting uh, to think about anyway. Um, I went with blue flame on her just because she has flyer formation and chances are She's going to be around people a lot. Um, but she comes with Draconic Aura, which is what she has right now. Let's go take a look. Does she have another one? Did I just not give her? No, she has Draconic Aura. It's like her her, her final whatever. Um, so this is about a third of uh, attack, which if you see on the left there, uh, at max investment, she'll have 63 attack with the Duma, 
She'll have 60 with the Duma um, bonus. She has 63, uh, which is why Duma is so valuable, which is why, again, it's difficult for me. I've been debating back and forth whether to run Duma and Mirabilis or just to, uh, take out Duma and run two Mirabilises. Um, and we'll talk about why I think Duma is probably the way to go at the end of the day anyway. Um, but yeah, th I mean, there, there, there's good arguments for both sides, and I think I'll explain sort of why I'm just landing on the on the Duma having been there and leaving the, the Duma there. I need to forget. I need to not touch them. Uh, anyway, so let's go back. Um, so she has Blue Flame there because Blue Flame uh, is a flat 25 when she's close to somebody, and it's also a three cooldown special with thanks to uh, Dragoon Axe. It's also it's now a two cooldown special. Um, so basically, as well as with her, right, I liked having the uh, guard on, uh, let's go back here, the guard on Camilla there, but she's got guard built into her weapon as long as you're fighting someone at max health, so that's that's a, that's, that's just great, um, as well as having the plus four here. Um, but yeah, like I said, so Blue Flame is a 25 flat, uh, and hopefully, given flyer formation and the way they're positioned, they'll, um, that'll almost always trigger when she's uh, adjacent to somebody. Um, now... On top of that, she's got Dragoon Shield, which again is is it's just a better IO shield um, for her. Uh, in that case, the only thing it doesn't give you is Res, which is would be nice, but I mean it's it's fine basically that it's not there anyway. Um, so the special, I, I keep getting distracted off of the special here. So talking about the special, you want to ask um, what special should she run? Um, she's got a hot she's got a high amount of of uh defense there so maybe you could run something like i think it's is it late is it bonfire uh i think it, i forget i think it's ignis that does 80 percent of the unit's defense which on her would be a three cooldown special uh but i do i do think i do kind of value the the two cooldown special being what she has on her but anyway so if you're running a three cooldown special um having it be glace uh glaces ignis that's 80% of her resistance of her defense. Now we'll take her defense stat. 80% uh, of that, 10% of that is 4.4. 20% um, of her defense is 8.8, .8, which will round it up to 9. Uh, 9, so 44 minus 9 gives you the uh, 35. So an Ignis special will hit for 35 damage over the 25. So for one more cooldown, you can run that or you can run the Blue Flame, which I don't think there's a too bad to I don't think it's too bad to decide which one there's not too much of a trade-off uh, picking one or the other right so you can either have one turn less and go with the blue flame for 25 or one turn more and go with the Ignis for uh, 35 um, both of them are I think are fairly good but the, the thing is now my original thinking was thinking with uh, bonfire which bonfire is three again you put it on her it goes down to two the bonfire does 50% of your defense this case being 22 so Bonfire compared to the blue flame, the blue flame wins out. Um, compared to the Ignis, like I said, so it's a two cooldown special versus a three cooldown special. And I think, I, and I personally do value being able to use the special sooner uh, rather than just hitting once for a really high amount of damage. But like I said, uh, that's going to take, not only is it going to take. Uh, just experience i mean it's gonna take experience and tweaking um i'm gonna run with the blue flame for a while and see how that goes and then uh, i might change it to uh ignis later but that's something to consider um the point i'm the main point was i don't think bonfire is the way to go and then we, we consider something like again here um uh the draconic aura now this one's the worst one because 30% of the 63 attack is basically one third. So one third of 60 is um, 20, and one third of three is one. So you're gonna have 21 uh, damage on a Draconic Aura. Uh, the Draconic Fang is a three cooldown special that you're doing 30, so half of like 31 damage, which is nothing compared to the um, the, Ign the the Ignis. Uh, if I'm saying these wrong, Ignis and Bonfire, I don't know which one is the 80 and which one's the 50, so um, just, you know, no, I'm talking about the 80 defense and 80% defense and the 50% defense. Uh, Draconic Aura, I don't think any of the Dr Draconic ones are what you want to be running on her. Again, um, I am working on just, again, she's still in the process of being built, so when I get the, I do have a blue flame I can give her, um, but I'm just not going to give it to her yet, again probably gonna run with the ignis but i think i i feel like i want to stick with the blue flame 
Um, and then you see she has flyer formation. Obviously, that line goat flyer she has, um, and attack Resbon. So the the Minerva on the right is obviously plus ten, plus five flowers, as well as um, blessed with the animal blessing. Uh, so she gets the plus five to res from Mirabilis, uh, which is good because obviously her res is pretty uh, garbage. Uh, so I would like to just kind of boost that up with an attack res bond because I think she uh, at 46 speed I think she has plenty of speed plus all the goads and the wards um, around her giving her more stats are, are something to consider as well. Um, so that's why I think the attack res bond is pretty good to boost her up to basically uh, 34 res. Which again, it's a little on the low side, but it's it's decently respectable, especially for her who is going to be hitting pretty hard. Because not only is she tanky, she also hits pretty hard, and she's pretty fast, which is what, what I like about her. Um, uh, what else? But yeah, so let's this. I guess this is a good point to mention here. So let's see if I have her built here. What she has ward. So I have her on ward. I think I'm going to stay with ward on her no matter what because of this so having her d provide attack speed and uh defense and res is is pretty valuable so i think no matter what i'm going to keep her on the the ward here uh but the question you want to ask yourself uh is and it'll take some tweaking again uh, thinking about what's going on why you lose what what could have helped uh, going through all your defense matches and all that stuff but ultimately you want to consider what to run in this uh, c slot whether you want to run more um, more wards or more goads. Um, now, again, it might be an easy matter of just saying, "Oh, let's just run all wards." Basically, then we won't be killed because we'll have we'll be stacking a lot of um, tankiness. But I don't think it's as clear cut as that because you do really want to like ensure that when you fight back, you get kills on the enemy team against the enemy team. Um, and goad helps you do that. Now, again, like I said, so what it comes down to basically is this tweaking. Going through your um, your defense matches and all that stuff and looking in there and seeing, okay, uh, where am I losing? Uh, could I, you know, did I, am I more often than not needing more bulk? In that case, just start, you know, stacking more wards. Or am I good on survivability, but every time my units retaliate, they don't take any kills, um, which is obviously, which is honestly going to be a lot more beneficial. Because a lot of matches are just like someone loses one unit and then they leave because that's too much aether to be losing to, to stay in a high level, which becomes more and more important as you go up. Like if you're doing well in your aether raids, like if you're getting perfects most of the season on your attacks, you're going to be matched up with people in higher brackets. People in higher brackets are under much more pressure to... Um, get perfect on every on every Aether Raids attack the same way you are. So if that's the case, uh, getting one kill is usually better than not getting any kills at all and, and just kind of tanking and then maybe losing anyway, right? So that's kind of something you want to consider again is, is how valuable is your defense versus your attack in that situation. Um, but yeah, so again... The ward is really the wards and the goads are really something that you really need to tweak as you go along uh, in your game. Um, so yeah, uh, so let's talk about uh, Pala here. Now, she has Dragoon Shield, and she has uh, she'll have Io Shield here, as you can see on the on the left there. Um, so these two are basically immune to um, bows, which I. Which to me is like one of the reasons I'm, I'm starting to really enjoy using this team because we're removing the, the, the biggest weakness of flyer units being the, the bow weakness. Um, with her using a seal and her just getting the free uh, IO shield here with actually a lot more benefits than a regular IO shield. Um, so again, so now let's come back here. Why then are we using um, Pala without it? Uh, that's because... Given that my two forward positions as well, like these three forward positions here are basically immune to bows. Uh, I mean, you know, you still have to fight the bow user and, and see where you go from there. But the bow effectiveness is gone. Which basically, if someone looks at this team, they'll have to think really hard about whether or not they want to bring a bow in, into here. Because the two units you need effectiveness on, which is going to be these three basically, are not going to... are not going to have it, right? 
you don't like what there's very little reason to bring in a bow user if these are the only targets you can hit and like I said I'll, I'll talk about this positioning here in a little bit but um, since you can't really hit her is it really worth bringing a bow user and if it isn't um, then there you go you you've already won that mental battle of these two are so tanky that you sort of dis discourage running the bow user so you effectively by having two so such strong forces um, making the bow irrelevant you kind of basically win that battle and now you can push forward now uh, don't get me wrong as always this is not going to dissuade 100 percent of people but it'll dissuade enough people from using bows that you can kind of go on about your business without worrying about the bow effectiveness but again as always there will be someone who will use bows on you and they will do decently well so something to consider but like i said so um, I have her without it because again, hopefully these two have dissuaded and even if they haven't dissuaded um, Maybe they've hopefully between these three They've removed the bow threat and then I can go on about my business with this and even going here even going with these two teams These, these teams which I again, I, I do believe they are poorly set up um, Because the only one that's bow ineffective is her Is her right so here all these others are bow you can just kill them with a bow really quickly um, a lot of my defenses over the past, you know, since I've been running this, people aren't running a lot of bows on me. Like I'll lose to other things, and which is good um, because it means that our main weakness, people are sort of already reluctant to run it. Now you're throwing in these two, and it makes it a lot harder to do. Um, now with the advent of Cronia that everybody can use, Cronia makes um, running daggers a lot more interesting, especially with broadleaf fan and all that other stuff. Um, but yeah, in general, uh, it's good to consider that idea that maybe bows are, people are moving away from bows. Uh, Norn is there, so that's always something to consider. Um, who else? Uh, Leaf with Meisterbogen, um, Krom, all these bows. But again, it's kind of hard to run Krom, right? Because I have two units that are effective against Krom, as well as Brave Lucina. Is it Brave Lucina? I don't know. The one that uses the bow with Future Visions Lucina. Uh, I can basically beat her down, beat those two bow users down, which to me are basically the, the most annoying uh, bow users out there. So, which is why I'm okay with running these. So again, so now hopefully I've, I've to some degree explained sort of my reasoning as to why she doesn't have the IO shield on her. Um, because, like I said, hopefully we, we've gotten rid of any bow users or sort of, for one, dissuaded them at the uh, preview and then... If not then, then hopefully uh, they've been taken care of to some degree by her and her and, and maybe him. Um, but yeah, so okay, so now we, we, we've put the side, okay, we don't need to worry about the, um, we do need to worry, you know, we've put the side, we've, we've talked already about the uh, bow uh, conundrum with her. So now, basically, I went with uh, Mirror Impact because it's going to be some of your highest DPS here. You're going to be hitting people for plus 6, uh, plus 10 res, which basically helps patch up your res stat here. Uh, she should have the 29 res because of the boost from here, so she's up to 39 res, uh, 33 defense. Um, but yeah, so basically it means it's harder to run magical threats on here because none of these, like for one, she's basically mage proof if you see on the left here uh she's got 45 res she is not her her res stat is going to be very weak but hopefully with her and her here um deterring enough of that especially with her as well um we can sort of see how that goes uh but yeah so she's here as you see here i have a lot of there's there's three green units about that's that makes up 50 percent of my units so you would say obviously that um Red is basically going to destroy me, but that's why I put so much uh, weight on this unit here specifically, because this unit is what's going to dissuade a lot of red units. So if they're going to hit me with like a Midori, I don't think I've seen anybody with Midori, but uh, like a Midori here with a red bow, she's trying to hit these people or whatever, you're going to get effectiveness, and even then you're not guaranteed to kill because of how much um, stat stacking is going on here. Um, but then if like Midori's here and she tries to hit her, well then she's just dead. Like no there's 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 pro well I, I mean to my knowledge i don't think there's a single red unit that can withstand a quad from pala with this much damage that she's putting out 
again she should have probably um drawback here to like in case like i said she's here and then like I, she moves here and she draws her back this way so that they're both here or something like that uh just to make sure we want to you want to really keep the flyer ball especially with her given what her weapon can do uh, and i'll talk about her right now um uh the thing about i like about her is basically i'm finished with her um getting more merges on her will be great but at the plus one she's already like i said equal to if not uh in some cases better than um the regular est um at a plus 10 so that's kind of nice to have uh, as well as again considering you really do want to run this especially now that there's more and more powerful um, duo skills out there um, you want to have at least one duo unit I think on your team um, just to again you just want to sort of overlap your coverages so now instead of you know you could you know there could be a chance you, you, you beat a lot. I mean, a lot of these aren't necessarily auto win. I mean, the dual skill is not, not a necessary auto win or auto lose button that uh, the player activates, but why take that chance? Why not just put something in there that'll cover that? And and Pala does that very well while, um, again, fulfilling the same role that S does. Uh, to some degree, again, the, the armor effectiveness cannot be understated here. It, it is, it's a very powerful uh, thing to have, especially with force doubles. Um, but... Now that that stuff is already out of the way, let's talk about what strengths um, Pala has. For one, she's got an attack stat of 64, which goes up to 67 with Duma. That is a lot of raw damage. Now, as well as considering she has a minus four uh, attack and defense uh, on her on her uh, lance here just for having three or more flyers on your team which if you're flying, running a flyer ball that's always um like basically that's the main requirement right um as well as she gets a follow-up attack now if there's two she quads um which is just amazing uh i have in this case i have heavy blade on her because i just like the meme of hitting once charging the moon bow and since she has the double because of again th this right here she basically hits once and then the moon bow right after and if they survive that she gets hit back right but she's also got a lot of defense a decent amount of defense and a decent amount of res because of this and she hits again with another attack and another moon bow in the same combat so she can get moon bow off twice um again that that's sort of a meme and it's sort of uh looking at her in isolation um but i really do think that here you should have hardy bearing uh be, especially because you don't want to get in that situation where you lose to like a Kronia just because Kronia glimmer counterattacked you and you just died right um but yeah so i do i do think and especially especially no matter just no matter what in general you you always want to have a unit on your team with hardy bearing because hardy bearing it's such a huge thing that uh Vantage players have to work around you don't negate the strategy, right? I mean, you, you know, we're all I mean I think most of us in tier 27 use uh, CC vantage strats uh, and and hardy bearing is never like a deal breaker I'm never just like oh, I, I lost because hardy bearing is there You can lose because it's there and it's something you really do need to consider very heavily uh, But it's not an auto lose for you, um, but I think on your defense There's never a reason for you not to just have a hardy bearing unit there. So like I said, I think I need to. I think this is the best thing to have here is going to be Hardy Bearing. Um, yeah, uh, and I like the fact that this denies follow-ups, which is just even 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 better. Uh, but yeah, so she's here basically to be. She is close to her, and they're supposed they're here basically to um, cause trouble to every um, every red unit out there. Um, that you might consider running into this so like I mean for one this is an astro defense in anima astro defense which means uh, people's altinas are going to be here so just her by herself can just destroy an altina without even a second moment's notice um, which I think is great uh, especially with hardy bearing right because altinas often are run with the vantage so they'll get them down to vantage range in some way and then they'll just push them out there um and altina will do her job and just kind of hit them really hard uh so let's do okay 
right? So that's kind of you know some thought process behind um, why she's here and what she does here. So and I want let's let's take a look here. So I have uh, on the right here, if you look, um, basically an alternative to Pala for like free to play. Again, I was building her um, before I got Pala, but I was sort of it was a slow process, um, and I only got up to like plus three. Uh, then Pala came out, and I was just sort of, you know, I was like, all right, let's let's just do it. Let's just go with the Pala instead, because I really did like the Pala. Um, but yeah, so Est, 62 attack. Um, the, the speed doesn't really matter. Uh, it, it's decent because she can basically uh, outspeed a lot of tanks and end up quadding them. But uh, the speed's not very important because you end up killing them with a the double usually anyway, right? So there's no really real, real there's no real reason to quad um, tanks. Um... Uh, her only problem this is this is again these these are my builds this is what I would put on her if I had a plus 10 if I continue to uh, build her um, these are the skills I'd have on her and these are the skills I did have I didn't have the attack defense form but uh, I had attack defense bond um, but yeah these are the skills I would have if I had kept building her um, if I kept going uh, the ward again the wards are always the goads the wards is always something that you need to tweak you need to figure out which which more beneficial to you uh, but the attack defense bond because if you have the two bonds, she gets up to 39 defense, which is pretty good, and uh, 72 attack, which is uh, phenomenal, plus the three to all her stats from the White Wing Spear effect, uh, as long as you're just meeting those requirements. And in a uh, flyer ball like this, again, chances are you're going to meet those requirements. Uh, so I want to take a moment here to go back again to uh, Acarus's, uh video here. I, I don't like... Oh, what did I do anything? Okay. I don't like the S kind of being here because S is going to be your one of your bigger damage output potentials. Um, and I'd rather not have her be there where she can be easily sniped. So, you know, they'll, they can like just put a person here and hit her and then hopefully, I mean, they can, you know, they'll survive and, and do things from there. But uh, S is going to be your huge damage potential. So you don't really want to have her uh, there. But again, this is sort of, I don't, you know, again, he doesn't talk too much about the positioning and all the stuff going into this the way I'm doing it here. Arguably, I'm doing it a poor job considering how long I'm taking, but um, uh, he probably has reasons uh, around, you know, what I have. So always, again, always go back to, to, to these videos that he has. Uh, he probably has better reasons for them than I do. As you can see here, he has a 75 red shares. Uh, I think he's been in tier 20 or whatever the highest tier is, the highest rank highest ranks uh, since the game since the modes came out so um, again I don't have my pal my pala in the same position he has as est for the reasons I stated I don't like her being so vulnerable um, but he probably has other reasons that I'm not considering and, and things like that so again you know take that with um, some skepticism as to where you should have her um, so yeah so like I said uh, est is a very good choice uh, the, the attack defense form I just I pulled a uh, evil Evelyn or something. I forgot who has it, but she, I pulled one of her, uh, and I was just like, "Oh, I, this seems really good. I'd put this on her, um, just because you get seven instead of five, uh, especially because it's basically uh, like a, a, a ward or a goad, right? You with as long as you're within everybody who's within two spaces gives you some, and, and chances are if you're um, if you're running bond, you're adjacent to one of them, um, and if you're running this, there's just a higher chance you'll have better stats out of it. Um, but you can run Bond, or equal, which is equally as, as effective here. Um, but yeah, so like I said, that's just an al alternative to, to Pala. Um, the other thing that I will point out here one last time, is, I think this is probably was last time, he has a uh, Red Pala here. I really do value this Red Pala to a large degree from my perspective because the biggest nightmare to most AR defenses is just going to be uh, Brave Ike tank. Uh, Pala and Pala has, I think the Ruby Sword, which gives her, you know, more effective damage against greens. And I really, so I, I I've debated a lot whether or not I should put her on there. Um, it kind of, I kind of, you know, talked myself into circles and basically resulted in just like not having to worry about it. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, for those of you out there who might want to uh, run something like this, that Pala is a very good choice. Especially just in general, you want to have good coverage of all the colors. So he has, you can see there, he has the green, a very strong green, a very strong blue, and a very strong red. Um, so you want to have coverage of all those colors. But I think the way I have mine set up uh, covers all those colors in a very theoretical way. He said, so if they, they put a green here, 
uh, hopefully my two greens and then we'll talk about Duma there um, can deal with that green well enough if they put if they put a, a red around here somewhere hopefully my pala does a good enough job at getting rid of that red um, and then it, obviously I, I don't think anybody's uh, running blues into my team uh, if they are then that'd be very strange but basically I'm discouraging you know croms um, Lucina's uh, just any blue unit is really sort of discouraged by this team so I have blue covered green tentative and red again tentative which as always it's like it's a uh, it's about a, it's a bit of a RNG fest there um, but yeah so like I said I'm not too worried about blue uh, reds someone brings a red in here they're just gonna get demolished by uh, Pala and like hopefully they haven't done un enough damage to the whole team by then uh, who, who is it um is it Ellie Wood? I think uh, Ellie Wood with his uh, Gale Force Ellie Wood to me sounds kind of dangerous, but uh, I think like the, the Gale Force teams, once you kill the Gale Force unit, a lot of times it's like they don't have a lot of follow up after that. Uh, so hopefully between him and her and like the rest of this, we can deal with Ellie Wood, especially like she has cav effectiveness anyway, right? Uh, she's got a, and these, she's got a huge defense stat, so hopefully she can maybe not beat Ellie Wood, but do something against him, right? Um, but yeah, so that's that's that. Uh, but anyway, let's let's go back to. So that's what Pal is doing here. Um, so let's talk about Duma. So again, like I said, she should uh, when this starts, when the season starts, she should have uh, ground orders to make it so that he has flyer formation. Essentially, she she grants him flyer formation. Uh, otherwise, well, I guess we did need to go back one more time. Otherwise, I would probably have. Um, Mirabilis in the same position he has the uh, the Leanne there because you, you kind of want the dancer to be around everybody to, to do her dancing thing um, but the the problem is I really do need that ground orders on um, on the Micaiah to give it to uh, Duma uh, if I ever get another ground orders I'd probably give it to her uh, right here and then maybe move her to the middle and that'd be fine but I don't have another ground orders and Micaiah is too valuable to just sacrifice especially because i have a plus one um but yeah let's talk about duma here for a second duma is basically uh serves the same purpose but colorless that pala does he's here for one fell breath is pretty uh, upheaval is pretty decent um people put their uh bolt towers right here or right here or their healing towers right here or right here so usually you're going to be hitting something valuable in this position here so that's for one that's pretty good uh, for two, upheaval, the damage you get on everybody, it's like, it's alright. It's not something to write home about. It's not something you really care too much about. Um, but yeah, so that's what's up with that. <laughs> uh, but aside from that, uh, I'm running uh, Double Death Blow, Bold Fighter, uh, Fell Breath, Duma. For the sake of basically just killing anything. Now, Glimmer is here because I've been going back and forth on what to give him as a special. Um, I want a two-turn special because he's going to force doubles with Bold Fighter. So, it comes down to either Glimmer or the... Um, or the... Uh, what's the other one? Or obviously Moonbow. So it's Glimmer or Moonbow. Uh, and I think I'm going to run with... I'm going to stick with Glimmer... I had Disencounter on him a long time ago. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to stick with the Glimmer just because, uh, for one, right, Glimmer scales off how much damage he's doing. So theoretically, it kind of scales off of his attack. Now, it doesn't work that way. Obviously, it's not um, like a Dragon Fang or something like that. But the fact that he's doing so much raw damage thanks to his huge attack stat, 65, plus the two Death Blows, plus, plus the six from this... Hopefully, that is more valuable to the Glimmer than just running a Moonbow, right? Um, so yeah, that's what he's here for. He's here to, like, if someone puts End's turn here with a unit or something, uh, maybe she'll stand here and he'll come over here and hit it right here like that. Or she'll do this, or and, and she'll come over here, follow her for no reason, and he'll come down here and hit him like that, right? So basically, I have two very hard, two very hard damage carries one that's against one that's effective against uh, blues well not uh, neutral against blues effective against reds and 
ineffective against greens and someone who's just effective against everybody now um he obviously this is astra season so we're gonna fight nagas wait uh, yeah we fight nagas in the season i think yeah okay um so obviously this is astra season we'll fight nagas uh so the, but the thing is like it's like unless they're like a gale force unit right they'll hit him and then just kind of be here and, and think about what they're going to go from there right um i think like the, the, the thing is 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 he's kind of here to be more of a red herring than anything else right uh you come into this map and you're like okay i need to deal with duma so they, they kind of hopefully you 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 force them to to make poor decisions to just get rid of this duma because how much damage he's going to deal uh and then you know the rest of these units again like Camilla and and Minerva, while being very tanky, they can also deal a decent amount of damage. They're not, you know, they're obviously they're, they're not Dumas, right? And even Duma doesn't deal a whole lot of damage sometimes. I mean, they're not like they're not Palas, but they will do they'll do a decent amount of damage over time, which is you know what that the point of that is is, is you're not always a lot of times these these battles are ended basically, basically the battle is decided in turn one or two of uh, Aether raids or you know maybe turn. They're 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 decided in two turns. Whether it's the first two, the second two, the third two, you know, usually two turns is what it takes to 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 see who's gonna win this battle. Um, but yeah, so Duma's just here to hopefully wipe out somebody. Uh, and if you know anything about my personal fears, um, my biggest probably the the one thing that like plagues me in the night is going to be Brave Ike. Um. So the idea is hopefully he can do something to Brave Ike. Um, yeah. Uh, also, having ground orders on her and giving him flyer formation mobility. Uh, hopefully, I can just catch people out, right? So like they'll do something stupid and then like, oh, here's Duma. He moved all the way over here and hit you or something like that. Um, that's kind of the the idea with that. Um, again against higher tier people uh they should really be paying attention to everything but again uh, a lot of sometimes aether raids become sort of formulaic even at the higher tiers that you just kind of you just kind of playing just to play and then you know you get caught out by something stupid right um so that's that uh so again i, I think i've spoken about micaiah to a degree unfortunately uh you might say why do you have a plus speed uh micaiah and all i have to tell you is uh, rng my friend rng um yeah, I got I pulled I got one Micaiah from the Choose Your Legends. I think like you get to choose one and they just give you one for free and I picked Micaiah and I think she was uh actually who did I pick from that? Was it Micaiah? I can't remember now. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, um Micaiah with the res uh, speed boost is what I'd ended up with. Um I pulled a second and this is all I got. Uh Ideally you want like a res or a or an attack. Boon. Uh, right now she has 47 res because of the the blessing from her. Uh, so with the plus three on the 47 gives you 50, which basically means you're you're debuffing pretty much everybody um, for res. Um, so again, that's you know Yoon's whispers is the main reason she's here. Uh, attack res bond is, four is pretty good. Uh, ground orders again is going to be here and uh, have to figure out what to put here uh, because she needs flyer formation and I don't want to take off sabotage defense. But it will get there. Um, uh, this, this, all this down here isn't very useful. What's useful is the dual effectiveness. So, like, if they're running, like, let's say they're running. Uh, I like this position here because it basically makes it hard for what's his name, uh, Leaf, uh, Meister Bogan Leaf, uh, to to kind of hit her. He has to. He can't really hit her from here. He has to like take out buildings and, and move here and, and do all kinds of weird stuff. Um, but hopefully this is a defensible enough position. Um, but yeah, so she has dual effectiveness, so we got dual coverage on calves and um, and tanks to some degree. Again, she she unless she one shots them, she's usually just gonna die um, on the retaliation, and most of them are going to be having distant counter and all that stuff. Uh, so hopefully she can kill them, which is why again, like you don't always want to be stacking uh, wards, right? Sometimes it's worth it to stack goads so that, like, see these two goads here are going to be giving her more attack stats so she can hit people harder. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of that. Um, but yeah, so she, she's fairly simple. Uh, the sacrifice is good for, like, they try to bait her out or something. Um, yeah, when you try to bait her out, <laughs> uh, sacrifice is pretty good because she'll, like, 
oftentimes activated on somebody because they'll have debuffs on them. And in general, it's just really good because, uh, like, she'll be here and then, like, you can just heal people. Yeah, so added healing and, and swapping people's buffs, uh, debuffs into buffs is just, is, is just really powerful in general. Um, penalties into bonuses, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so she's fairly straightforward. Uh, and lastly, we got Mirabilis, who I'm, I'm probably gonna, I might end up, I'm probably gonna end up merging her, but again, I'm still sort of debating that internally. Um, but yeah, so, uh, Fortress Res Defense is basically, uh, the best you can have in the A slot for, uh, just making her tanky. Um, I'm gonna swap these real quick. Uh, basically just making her tanky. Um, you know, huge stats here. Uh, let's see. Sabotage Defense is here for obvious reasons. Um, a lot of my, like, these two, these three here, um, are physical, so just in general, having more debuffs on the opponent is uh, always a good thing, and especially how easy it is to apply this, just, they have to be close to each other, right, and keeping people far apart is usually good, isolating, isol having their unit, having your enemy sort of isolate their units on their own is usually a good thing, because your, your whole team is based around sort of being in a ball, so if they can all just pile on to one guy, or one, one, one unit, um, you can do some serious damage. Uh, and then, of course, she has the uh, ward here. Um, the chill res is here just to help her, but I, I really need to put either flyer formation here or another chill somewhere. Uh, she'll probably have a chill here at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Um, but yeah, so this is this is basically the units. This is the core. Uh, again, on the left here, on the left here, I have uh, what these units should end up being uh, when I'm finished with them. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. so I think I'll put back that. Uh, so let's talk about the rest of this stuff here. Uh, this stuff, if you looked at, uh, if you recall the picture I showed with Acarus, he has this covered up here and then just kind of, j just to be annoying, I guess. Um, these are kind of awkward, like there's no real good place to put them. You can kind of just put them around here and there. Um, yeah, they're just gonna be a little weird. Uh, I'd rather just kind of leave an open path because event like essentially they're going to pop this stuff here and then move forward anyway. Um, so I might may as well just like clear a path and if it's, if it's not going to be that big a deal and just make it so that getting to this stuff here is a little more irritating so they have to go through here. Because uh, no one's just going to sit here and, and carve a way out through here. And they, they will and they may, right? That's fine. <laughs> um, so again, these are kind of like, you can kind of put these wherever. Just kind of, you know, think about where you want them, uh, where you think you'll have the most uh, advantage out of them. I do like this one here, though. Uh, this is, I think, th you know, this is among probably the best reason to be running uh, Lost Castle is because this is indestructible, and then you can put your fortress here, which is also indestructible. Um, so basically, this is safe because the only way to get to this is from here or here, uh, and you reduce how many spaces you can get here. So uh, this is nice because now they can't just, like, they can't just come up through here. They have to go all the way around here to get to this spot here. Uh, so let's talk about... So these two here are, again... You want to trick them into putting their people here where they can get possibly get hit by this uh, Panic Manor or this Tactics Room, right? And really sort of annoy them. So while they're climbing up this way, this Panic Room is always something they have to keep in mind. Like they have to snipe it here and then move their position, move their units around accordingly and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so if anybody tries to end turn here, it'd be really stupid of them to do that because of this and, and this. Um, this is here just because on defense, uh, they have the first turn and they have the initiative, so you want to limit their possibilities by reducing their, uh, their attacker's uh, abilities. But again, this comes down to, this one's really the one you swap in and out based on what the, uh, the bonus structure is. This one's not really that important, so... This is what you want to swap out thanks to bonus structure. The rest of these are kind of solid. You want to keep them here. Um, again, when it comes to Aether raids, uh, the Aether pot positioning, you know, uh, you just kind of want to like put these the way you you feel, uh, just the way you see fit, uh, essentially. Um, there really is not a whole lot of good places to put these. I kind of put them there, here just to be separate, but. Um, like you have five units, so you can just have one unit snipe this, and then the rest of the four that are actually going to do something move forward here. Um, fortunately, like if you're doing this on, um, like if this was in light season, 
air doesn't always do a whole lot. Sometimes she's just kind of here on the sidelines. So you can just put air here to snipe this and then have your other four units do something. But since this is an Astra, Ultina and Naga, are you already have two of their units. That's 40% of their units can't snipe this. So if they have something else... Um, a lot of people run Tethys or, or Aversa and all that stuff, so they'll be sniping this and going forward from there But like sometimes those units hold your smite and all that stuff So basically you want to bait them out to hit this and then uh, put that as far away as possible so you can so they have a hard time hitting it um, So basically these these unit these buildings here are two very important buildings So this this building here is one of the most important buildings now thanks to how many uh, Cronias are running around because she's free to play and, and fairly easy to build um Basically, you just need close call uh, and two savage blows, and you're basically done. Um, she'll do about as good as you want her to do. Now, to push her over the top, you really want that special spiral, uh, but it's not, strictly speaking, necessary. Um, but yeah, so uh, you want to have this in a pretty defensible position. So to hit this, they have to stand here. Uh, to get here, you have to go through here and then put your dancer here and then have her hit it like stand here and then they get uh, stunned or whatever and they have their dancer here and then hit it again anyway but by that point there's really no way to escape so you're kind of stuck right so the the healing tower you want it to be in a very defensible position so they don't just hit your people and then that's it so in the next turn you heal everybody and you're you're good to go mainly the healing tower as, as important as it is uh, in terms of positioning and, and all that stuff because of Kronia um, so this is here because you can't hit it from here, you can't hit it from here. Now if you hit it from here, right, you can, so a, a strat, what you can do is you put Kronia here, you hit it, uh, you dance Kronia, and then she stands here and she hits that. But by that point, she's in too deep, and she's just gonna die. Especially with Hardy Bearing here, right? Um, so these two units, these two here are like, you know, a lot of times people run like a hit and run sort of thing or like, a, you know, they'll put a unit here, hit this and then, you know, dance it and then move them back and then they'll use their dual skill, which is, again, it's fine. This is, I do think this should be here, but if you're like, I don't think it's as important as like having to straight up like, well, how about we do that? Um, yeah, so I'm still trying to figure out where to put this, but I do really believe that uh, duels hindrance this really needs to be here uh, especially with how powerful the new dual skills are coming um but yeah so like you can put this here i mean this doesn't do very much if like if they're already here they're already gonna like the fight's gonna start and this isn't gonna be too useful especially because um how limited like you're only hitting three three spaces here now you put it here right and then you're hitting all this here but and then they just they just snipe it because it's right there um so this basically is the, like as good as this tower is it needs to be somewhere like like right here right or like right here in the middle of all your units so that when if they try to hit it you can hit them back but this this is this unit this this unit this um this tactics tactics room uh it's more valuable when you have three movement um units so like when you're running something like uh uh a defense reinhardt or or um veronica or something like that uh where they have to get into a position where they can hit it and then your three movement unit can go over there and, and snipe them really hard. Um, but yeah, so like maybe you can put this here and get whoever comes up to hit this gets stuck with this, right? Uh, and then they have to go out of the way to come hit this or something, right? But there, there's really, it's like it's really hard to have this be in a protected position, maybe put it there, right? Um, so no matter where this is going to be, it's going to be pretty easy to snipe because all the best positions for putting your, your buildings, basically this is like the best position here. And outside of that, everything else can be easily destroyed uh, from relative safety because of how uh, your team ends up forming here. So, <laughs> well, I do agree this needs to be here somewhere. Um, trying to figure out where to put it is, is kind of iffy. Um, but again, so let's, uh, for a second here, let's go back here. So the way he has this set up, obviously he has the same, the same thing here. Now he has this uh, put back here a little bit uh, so that it matches that other block. I kind of like the forward position in that case because it, it blocks off a little more space um, especially because like uh, here so normally uh, let's see Acarus has this here right um, but I kind of like this here because it blocks off this uh, more space here because if I mean if they stand here they're not gonna do a whole lot anyway um, so basically just removing more space from your enemy is always a good thing more maneuverability um, and especially because I'm protecting this to some degree, right? So if I put this here, they're just going to hit this like that. So let's protect this to some degree and have them stand here to hit it. 
uh, they can't stand here and they well they can kind of stand here right but this will uh, pop them um, but yeah so uh, these are here again this is here to stop them from hitting this maybe you put something I uh, think uh, let's go back again see the reason he has the the boot trap the literal the, the boot trap and the lightning trap where they are is so that if you stand on like to hit this you need to either stand on the boot trap or the lightning trap um, yeah so that, that's why that's there right so in my case uh, I don't have the lightning trap in that position I have this thing here so you have to clear this before you get to stand there anyway so it basically reduces time um, but yeah so that's that uh, yeah, so this is sort of an explanation of, of my Aether Raid's uh, defense, what it is now, what I'm planning on doing with it uh, going forward. Uh, as a last thing, I, well, I, there's a, there's the last two things. So the last thing I'd like to mention is the idea of running two Mirabilises here. Um, I ultimately, I think I'm going to stick with running just one Mirabilis and one Duma because having more kill potential is what I'm missing. Because if I have two Mirabilises, um, what it comes down to is... I'll have a lot of defense and res. So the, the, the main reason you want to run another Mirabilis, for me anyway, is if you see on the left there, with with the second Mirabilis, her res boosts up to 34, which is pretty respectable because then you add on that uh, attack res bond, and she's at 39 res. 39 res and 44 uh, defense. Um, so, I mean, basically, that's one of the bigger things is to patch up... Um, to patch up her um, Minerva's poor res stat but I think at that point you're, you're sacrificing too much for survivability and you're losing out on a lot of kill potential so I think I'm gonna stick with that especially because now you're basically putting you're putting uh, Camilla up to 50 res uh, which is already sort of getting to the point where it's overkill um, but yeah so not to mention like you're gonna have overlapping um, like boosts for your units uh, doo -doo -doo. Ideally, like I said, so ideally you want her here because the three columns around here, here and here down, are what is going to be affected by her flower of ease. But uh, unfortunately, she's kind of relegated to here because she doesn't have the the thing. So, th so this is kind of messing up my positioning here a little bit. But I think that's fine regardless. Um, yeah, and then whimsical dream here gives everybody plus five and drops them by plus five. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's so. That's the other thing I wanted to mention is is why uh, second Mirabilis might be useful, especially especially because having two dancers on your team is infuriating beyond belief. Like, you would not believe how annoying it is to have to fight against those two dancers, um, especially with such bulky units and such you know heavy hitters this way. Uh, a third option could be like taking her out. Putting uh, uh, the Mirabilis there, I wonder, I think you can get the, the 3 attack, the 5 and the 5 res. Uh, basically having best of both worlds. So you get more attack, you get your damage potential, as well as having more res. Uh, but I think that's sort of overkill. Um, and I think I'm just going to keep it like that. I think that's that's good enough. Uh, like I said, the, uh, as the last thing, there was two things. So that was the second Mirabilis, why I'm going with uh, Duma and Mirabilis instead of Mirabilis and Mirabilis. Um, and you kind of do want to stick with two because um, running three, the third uh, unit isn't going to give you any more lift reduction. It only merges at that point. So you want to run two for max lift reduction and then merge them for even more max lift reduction or whatever you want to say. Um, let's go back. There's one last point I wanted to make here. And that is uh, that summer biolith might be a good choice now for one i'm probably clouded by i mean i think it's obvious what is sort of distracting me and, and is calling me to this um but i think even let's pretend let's put that to one side if, if it's possible right let's put that to one side and let's pretend like i'm not like i don't want to just pull on a top tier double waifu uh let's take a look at just biolith uh alone uh, so for one, she's got the ground orders, which means she's in prime position to take over uh, Micaiah's spot here. Uh, oh, again, oops, that's the wrong place. So she's in prime position to take over Micaiah's spot here to give him the flyer formation. 
Uh, additionally, the one thing, as you like, as I mentioned near the beginning, the one thing you're missing here is a very strong red threat to defeat greens, to hit greens hard. Um, and I think with her, she should be a decently strong pick for that, a uh, decently strong candidate for that position of, of, um, of being able to hit greens very hard. Uh, for one, she's got this, which is giving her a plus five attack speed. Uh, they all they don't get follow, they don't get follow up, and they don't prevent follow ups and all that stuff. And she's gonna double no matter what because of how fast she is. Given you know this, uh, as well as this, as well as uh, uh, this here and all that stuff. So she's gonna double. You can get a good speed uh, speed boon and all that stuff. Um, as well as if you don't have the pala. Having her as your dual unit is a pretty good choice too, right? That's something you want to consider, again, if you don't have the Pala. I have the Pala, so the dual thing is kind of reduced in my case. Um, but having this on a one turn cooldown too, basically she looks like a... Uh, I wanted to calculate this out on the uh, looking for that, that uh, damage calculator, that, that mass dual simulator for Fire Emblem. But she's not in there yet, so she's not ready. Um, I, I still don't think she's going to be strong enough to defeat Ike, uh, Brave Ike at a plus 10 merge. Like, a properly invested Ike, right, is what I'm thinking about. Uh, especially, like, if you want, like, an Ike with uh, plus 10 with guard, distant counter. Like, that's a very strong Ike. That's something that, like, I don't think even she can kill. <laughs> like, it sounds crazy, but even a red mage like her might have a hard time killing her. Killing him. Um, but this is something I wanted to uh, I, I wanted to mention is that I'm seriously debating pulling um, pulling Violet from this banner. Try to get trying to get well for one right. What's stopping me is not only is is, is for one you know, good sense right. Uh, don't don't just chase waifus as the general advice goes. Um, but also the fact that the the pity rates on this one are so low and there's no like guaranteed summon at the end, um, as well as the fact that. Summoning one alone is not enough. You really need to get that at least that plus one on this five star limited unit uh, To really make her fully effective as well as like you can see I'm, I'm kind of short on orbs, especially after that last summoning video um, So yeah, that's something that I think uh, needs to be considered or not needs to be but I think it's, it's something uh, decent to consider uh, is Can summer by provide a good position here? Um, because if you look, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, all the units we have, there aren't really good red mages to put in this position. Good flying red mages. I mean, like Ishtar is decent. She's also a dancer, which is very good. Um, but again, you're running, to, in my mind, right? You're running this red mage mainly because you want to counter Ike, and Red Ishtar, she's not strong enough to counter Bike, unfortunately. Uh, despite the fact that I think she can, she might be able to quad him, but the fact they can reduce every subsequent hit after the first one by eighty percent, it's 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 more or less irrelevant. Uh, the fact that she can quad him, um, but again, like if if you find these things that can work, it's just something I, I wanted to mention. Is I am aware of the over reliance on green here, um, but I really do think that it. It's not that big a deal, especially because hopefully between him and like these two hitting him constantly, uh, we might be able to take down a green Ike and and you know deal with whatever comes after that. Um, but yeah, so that was the other thing I wanted to mention. Just uh, Summer Byleth looks like a pretty good addition, especially like I said, as you can see on the right there. Maybe if you don't have Pala, right, drop Pala, put an S here, and then you know use your orbs for uh, Summer Byleth or something like that. Um, you know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this. But yeah, so this is this is uh, this is basically it. this is uh, me talking about uh, my uh, defense team and and what where I want to go with it. Uh, so here is my this is just a while we're here. I might make a video on this separately, but it's basically got the same principles. Uh, this is my um, this is my light season. This one's uh, this one's Astra. This one's light, and it's basically the same. Yeah, basically it's all the same, uh, except for that. Which I'm gonna put that there and put this here. Uh, this is my light season uh, team. 
uh, it's basically the same the same principle here is she gives her um, uh, ground orders and now she has uh, flyer movement uh, so and especially like she's red and she hits res so that's she's kind of here to do that job of like deterring if, if not killing them but deterring uh, Ike's brave Ike's um, even though she probably won't kill brave Ike I don't think uh, yeah but yeah so that's kind of what she's here for uh, I really do need to replace this because uh, if she has ground orders, uh, she's going to be adjacent to flyers a lot of the time, which is basically makes this useless. But again, this, this team isn't locked in yet, so it's not that big a deal. Um, uh, but yeah, so, and then obviously they're missing uh, seals and all that stuff. And then my Leanne isn't fully built yet or just ready. I mean, for one, I don't know how many merges I'm going to add to her. I'm not going to be pulling for her very often. But um, yeah, so my light season's a little weaker. This is why I went with my Astro season. Just to, it's probably the strongest season I have. Um, if you're going to run this in, you know, light season, apply these same principles and, and think about these same decisions. Especially, I think the fact that um, Mirabilis is here, I think, makes uh, light season a little harder to run from my perspective. Anyway, I mean, light season has Yoon um, as a flyer. Which I don't think she's gonna offer as much as Mirabilis in terms of you know what they do. Yoon is just I don't know. She doesn't do a whole lot. Every time I see a Yoon on defense, I just don't care. But Mirabilis is there, and I have to stop and think about like where like when Mirabilis came out, I have to I've had to like think about where uh, I'm acting now. They have a free dancer with their um, whatever going so going forward from there. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this long rambly video has. Uh, explained enough of what's going on here why certain things are done um things you want to carry over onto if you want to if you decide to sort of do your own flyer ball and and what to what to consider then um if you want to be safest as you saw in that picture with um Acaris's, uh flyer ball pala regular pala is probably the the strongest choice for just killing uh brave Ike and not having to worry about him just basically uh, regular Pala lets you uh, sleep at night. Let's go look at her real quick. I don't actually have, I don't even have a, a like, the, the reason I, I hesitated so, what, well not hesitate, but like, the reason I don't already have one built is because I don't have one built. The reason I haven't like considered her is because I'd have to be starting from the bottom uh, to try to get a plus 10 Pala. Let's take a look here. Uh, so she comes with the White Wing Sword, which gives her 20% uh, more damage against uh, greens yeah yeah so it gives her way more damage against greens which basically she's one of if not the only unit that can actually just like that doesn't actually have to worry about brave Ike she just slaughters him um, especially with her refine where she gets the white I think does she get the white wing effect I don't really know again I don't have her like max so I wouldn't really know um, but she's basically the only unit in the entire game that just doesn't even have to like. You don't have to sit there and calculate. Will I beat him? You're, you're gonna beat him. Like it's not. It's not nothing to worry about. Um, and she obviously yeah, she has armor slayer. Um, but yeah, so young Pala I think uh, is a very good uh, brave eye counter. I mean, she literally just is a brave eye counter. But uh, I don't have her built even one or a plus one or anything at all. So I'd be starting from scratch. Um, whether I want to make that investment. I re well, I really don't want to make that investment, which is the main reason why I haven't. Um, but yeah, so again, it, like Brave Ike is a, a nightmare to me, but not enough. It's not enough to get me to invest in regular Pala. So this is about as good as I'm going to get for dealing with Brave Ike. Um, but yeah, so I think that's fine. Um, I've gone on for like an hour and a half now. Hopefully, like I said, this has covered uh, enough about the Flyer Ball team. Uh, so you can carry certain things into your own um, into your own fireball teams uh, build and start building from there uh, Really again, like I mentioned, so let's switch these back you really want to consider who you're going to choose as your main anchor um, between Camilla or Ashnard or even uh, Minerva would be pretty good anchor here. It's just that she's got such a low uh, Res stat that there's a huge discrepancy with which uh, how tanky she is but um, Camilla is tanky on both ends of the spectrum, which is why I'm more comfortable having her. Which is why I'm more comfortable telling you it's it's a it's a, de a decently. A which is why I'm more comfortable telling you it's a decently solid choice between Camilla and Ashnard, uh, because both of them are both covering both physical and magic uh, to a pretty big degree. 
Um, but it, like I said, you could run uh, two Mirabilis's booster up to like, you know, let's go back to the other picture. Run two Mirabilis's booster up to 34 res, and then you've got a pretty solid uh, defense unit. Um, but I think that's sort of, you're falling into the, I think in that case, you're falling into the trap of like, oh, uh, Minerva can be really tanky. I think she has very good defense stat. But she's more of a damage dealer. Like she can deal a lot of damage because she's got a lot of speed, she's got a lot of attack, she's got cooldown reduction on her weapon, um, and she's got a lot of units around her that can boost her to help her do that. Uh, in terms of being really tanky, I do really think that uh, Camilla has the upper hand, uh, while still having a decent amount of strength. Um, she's probably not going to be like sniping people randomly, but um, she'll be. She's pretty good. Um, but yeah, so I think. Again, it goes back to the same thing. We're looking for an anchor here. I think it's much easier to build Camilla as an anchor than it is to build Minerva. Um, but I think like Minerva can run... Like the, the advantage Minerva has is she can run instead of... So my Camilla right here has... Uh, let's go back again. My Camilla has the guard effect. The guard effect is already on um, Minerva's axe. So you can run like dual, ra dual ranged or dual close. Um, I think Pegasus Flight might be... No... You, you need res for that, so you can't really do that. Um, but yeah, so you, you're kind of saving um, a B slot. Though the, my, the, 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 one of the things that kind of made me think about it was like, there isn't a whole lot of B slots to run on Minerva, right? Like, though close and dull range, you're you're getting jobbed on one end of the spectrum. I, I would personally, I think I'd go with a dull, uh, dull ranged, just because your threats are going to come from magical a lot more, right? Um, so you want to reduce the magical threats a lot more because you don't see a whole lot of dragons in Aether Raid's offense, at least not from my from what I see. Um, so you don't want a lot of dragons. So close, removing so close, dull close isn't as useful because like she has so much defense that you're stopping physical attacks from physical people uh, one on one close range. Uh, and the only person who does magical damage at close range are dragons, and you don't see a whole lot of dragons. So basically, at close range, you're only dealing with physical most of the time uh, at uh, distance at, at long range at, at two space you know long range you're dealing with bows daggers as well as mages and mages are very popular um, for example like Lelina is pretty good Sophia's now pretty good um, yeah uh, a few others so that dull range is probably gonna be your best bet and since you don't have to run the um, since you don't have to run the uh, the guard but yeah, I think you, you, you spend a little less effort um, making Camilla tanky than you do trying to fix up uh, Minerva's res stat, is my, my main point there. Um, but yeah, so like I said, been going on for an hour and a half. Hopefully uh, I, I've said enough about explaining the, uh, the ins and outs of not only my team, but uh, things you might, run in, might want to take into your own uh, Aether Raids. Uh, defense team and, and why um, I made some changes to accuracies and um, hopefully you can sort out you know what you think is an improvement or what you think is a downgrade and, and go from there uh, but yeah so yeah like I said I'll, I'll link accuracies video in the description or well, not not the video his channel and then you can go look through his videos and, and find uh, you know a wealth of knowledge he's got uh, on the game especially he's he's probably one of the better of us so yeah that's that's about it